What's cracking YouTube? It's your boy though. Back again with another reaction. We got a recommended video from my guy Derry, the Canadian basketball school that crushes NCAA opponents. Now, I don't know what this is, but we're about to get into it because I never heard about this. But before we do, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're first subscribers away for 335 subscribers. Let's get it. Uh, this is uh... You know, we Syracuse. should have learned last year that we shouldn't be playing this team. Blitzed Wisconsin in the first half. They blitzed Louisville. They blitzed Syracuse. You know, they, they just jump on teams. If you're not used to playing like that and preparing for it, that's what happens. You get blitzed, and we were another victim of that. When you think of the current most dominant college basketball programs, it's probably big names like Duke or Kentucky or UConn that come to mind. Not a school in Ottawa, Canada. But the Carleton University Ravens have all those teams beat. They've won 15 of the last 18 national championships. The man who built that program, Dave Smart, won 591 U Sports games as head coach of Carleton while losing just 48, a 93% win rate. Clearly, Carleton has dominated Canada, but they've also had significant success against American teams. During a typical summer, a select number of NCAA teams travel up to Canada for foreign tours, playing against local colleges. While on these tours, American teams have routinely struggled against Carleton. The Ravens regularly beat up on NCAA opponents during the month of August. These are technically only exhibition games, and the American teams do have some built-in excuses. NCAA practice time is limited during the summer. The exhibition games are played with a 24-second shot clock. Coaches use them to experiment with different lineups. And obviously, Carleton has home court advantage. But all that being said, it's pretty hard to make excuses for a 62 point loss. They beat which was Memphis the by of victory 30? for Carlton over Mike Dom's South Dakota State team. South Dakota State would eventually go 24 and 9 that year during the regular season. Carlton has also beaten highly ranked competition, like in the summer of 2013, knocking off a Wisconsin team that would eventually go all the way to the Final Four. Perhaps the biggest sign of respect for Carlton is that teams avoid playing them altogether. When Duke traveled to Canada with RJ Barrett and Zion Williamson, they played three other Canadian schools, but not Carleton. Duke didn't return their call. One of the reasons American teams have so much trouble is Coach Dave Smart's very unique defensive scheme. Carlton is well known for forcing opposing players left to their weak hand. But the defense is much more sophisticated than just that, and we'll get to those details later in this video. I'll also discuss at the end how the defense might translate if it was used to the highest it? levels of basketball like the NBA, including Smart's own opinion on that. The defense certainly worked against Colin Sexton in Alabama. Sexton shot just 4 for 13 from the field while being kept to his weak hand. Jay Wright called it the most unique defense he's ever seen and even flew Smart out to learn more about it. After the 2019 season, Smart actually stepped down from his head coaching position, but the 13-time national champion still plays an active role at Carleton. Currently serving as the director of basketball operations and sitting at the end of the bench during games. And regardless of his job title, Smart's defensive philosophy is still being used to suffocate Carlton opponents. Before we jump into that philosophy and how it compares to other unique hey, schemes this is like to be, Virginia I was supposed and to be Texas green screen. Tech, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future videos. For even more X's and O's and analysis, we have a college basketball newsletter linked down below. The Carlton defense is all based on their opponent, taking away the offense's strengths and making them rely on their weaknesses. Since basketball players are predominantly right-handed, a majority of the time, yeah, they're literally just making the ball to the left, making you That's go to the help defense. The That's and Dave they have, Smart having the other correct those other players draw. Simplify it to just a force left defense, but it, it takes hella discipline to do this. Possessions like this one, where the ball never even gets to the right side of the floor. A lot of people talk about it like it's a weak hand defense or it's a force left defense. And yes, there are places on the floor where we want people to go where they're weakest in terms of their ability to pass. But we're not forcing anybody anywhere 
early. We may be pushing them certain directions and dictating a little bit, but we don't want to have many help situations. Here's a graph of the 17 other teams in the OUA. The league Carlton is a member of. It shows how often each defense forces a driver left during an isolation. The league average is over 52%, which might in part be because of Smart's influence on his peers and Canadian basketball as a whole. Other teams use the forced left concept, but Carlton still led the league by a large amount. So even though Smart says they're not fully forcing to the weak hand, the defense still produces extreme results. Yeah, I did. it doesn't look like they're forcing. They're not pressing up to make you do anything. It's literally like, okay, you got the ball up top. I'm turning my body this way. Turn my body so you can go left. And then my teammates going to help. And then everybody else is going to drop. He not pressing you to go to the left I think if they players is just going left because they giving it to them but it's a it's the scheme that it looks like they giving it to them but they really not. For comparison, two of the most system-oriented NCAA defenses, the Virginia Pack line and the Texas Tech no middle, were both relatively near the 50-50 range. There are two situations where Carlton does prefer to outright force the ball to a weak hand. When the ball's below the wing, towards the corner, or on long closeout situations. Long closeouts are unique because the opponent already has an advantage to begin with. So Carlton players close out aggressively on the strong hand to take away the shot attempt while also forcing yeah, the driver forcing into the designated help. help area. It's these scramble scenarios where they want to predetermine where the drive is going in order to get back to even, allowing all five players to be on the same page with their rotations. The and, other you, and you know why it works more? Because say you over here, and they force you left, it gives the team more time to um, get to the spot and help and everything, help drop. It helps more time rotating. Carlton will completely force the ball weak is in or near the corner. The geometry of the court go. makes this an especially difficult area for a right-hand driver to make a play on the baseline. It's the same exact concept Texas Tech uses in their no middle defense. When the ball's in the left corner, Carlton and Texas Tech both operate under very similar principles. Defending to a weakness actually isn't about scoring, it's about passing. The Carlton defense forces you to regularly make this off balance skip or hook pass with your weak hand. If you can't pass at a high level, you can't play. Our big thing is just trying to figure out where people are comfortable passing and where they're not comfortable passing and make them always go to a place they're not comfortable passing. It's not about whether they can score or whether they can't score. It's about making them go where they need to get them going so that they're always passing it from a place they're not comfortable from. Even when these passes don't result in immediate turnovers, it's still much harder to accurately pass to the shooting pocket with the weak hand. Just a few inches too high or too low can affect the shooter. On target, on time is the key to winning. And it's the key to, to losing if you can't do it. So making sure that people can't pass it on target, on time is going to change the whole dynamic of the team. It's all cyclical. The more difficult they make the pass, the easier it is to close out on the shooter to their weakness. And then after a successful closeout, the cycle repeats itself over and over again. If an opponent does get to their strong hand, the Carlton reaction isn't to overhelp. Again, the main point is to take away easy passes. So instead of giving the handler an easy line of vision for a right hand pass, the help stays at home and the on-ball defender just has to fight to cut off the drive. Hey, you know what I'm noticing? When they force you left and you go up, for a layup or you try to throw one of them off balance passes, the players are just walling up and they're not even like trying to like shot, like you can shot block, but they're not throwing their hands. Like, you know, trying to get, they're not block chasing. That's, that takes a lot of discipline, bro.
What Carlton doesn't want is to get too extreme with their foot angles. It doesn't happen often, but occasionally ball handlers can snake back into the middle off their weak hand drive. That's where the distinction between forcing and dictating is important. We saw when the ball's in the left corner, Carlton looks like Texas Tech. But when it's on the right side, they look very different. Funneling the ball to the middle like a Virginia or San Diego State style pack line defense. You'll also see Carlton swarm the ball like the pack line, building a wall of defenders against dribble penetration. That, oh, I was about to say, he made that, that's tough. Most defensive schemes start with a set of base principles. Texas Tech keeps the ball out of the middle and helps with the lowest defender. Virginia plugs the gaps and helps early. There might be some opponent-specific tweaks made to the base defense, but the foundation stays the same. Carlton's scheme takes the inverse approach. The base principles are first and foremost determined by the opponent personnel. Our defense is based on the individual players and what they like and don't like doing. Not only does the on-ball defender need to know which way to guard the ball, but the other four defenders also need to process that information in real time and act accordingly. Carlton players are extremely good at executing with the IQ and awareness to understand the Look, game just and up. correctly, not to mention the intensity to give multiple efforts on each play. Scheme is important, but so is hustle. The Carlton defense will also give different forms of help depending on the player. Against shorter guards, they won't help as early, allowing the ball to get deeper in a spot where shorter players tend to struggle passing over longer defenders. Again, the scheme is all about passing. You'll see this a lot from Carlton, a player pointing to communicate the helper. In this case, the scheme calls for late help with the stunter staying at home. They'll also treat off-ball players differently depending on their skill set, like sagging off of nons, which is Smart's terminology for non-shooters. This isn't really unique to Carlton. Most defenses use a similar yeah. concept to give extra help, but their defenders are always weighing the player with the ball against the player they're guarding. They're literally just walling up in the paint too. I like that. There are even some exceptions to their weak hand rules. In 2019, Ryerson's leading scorer was JV Mukama, a tall wing looking to create his own shot. He shoots the ball with his right hand, but prefers driving left. Because of that, Carlton forced him right. It's exactly how Smart has said he would guard Kevin Durant, a player who's also at his best scoring to his left. Usually the scheme does revolve around taking away passing strengths, but a tall score first wing can warrant an exception. <laughs> oh my God, you Speaking blew a of bunny. NBA players, here's what Smart had to say about James Harden and forcing NBA talent to a weak hand. Like in the NBA, it's not a case of whether James Harden can make that play going to his right hand. It's how much of a difference is it in terms of on target on time when he's going left as opposed to going right. If it's a big difference, you have an advantage over everybody who doesn't force him to make that pass going to his weakness. On ball screens, Carlton has several different options and usually changes their coverage multiple times within a game. But their shock and under coverage is the most unique, with the big briefly jumping out to provide some resistance on the handler, while the guard slides under to beat the ball to the spot. The shock and under coverage is one of the reasons why Carlton dominates a specific defensive statistic every single year. Of the 1,300 plus American and Canadian college teams tracked by Synergy Sports, Carlton ranked first in this particular stat in 2019 and second in 2020. I wrote all about that mystery statistic and why it's so important to Carlton's success in our latest Hoop Vision newsletter, as well as God. some final thoughts on Dave Smart's defensive philosophy in the larger context of college basketball.
The link is in the description, so make sure you sign up for that if you're not already. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching. Hey, this is a W video, bro. This is a W video. I never knew this, bro. That's a W coach, bro. I like this video. Shout out to Derry for this, bro. This is a W video, man. But, uh, YouTube, I'm out of here. Recommend me more videos to watch. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Now I'm gonna catch you boys on the flip.